All right, everybody. Welcome on back to the Roadshow Week 13 Picks and Preview. Last week, we had a great week. Winning week for both Guy and I. All football across Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Sunday slate. It was a great, great day. The trio treat treated me well, two and one, with a miracle, and I'm talking miracle, Miami first half, minus six and a half, cover, to put me at two and one. Sunday slate went three and two, unfortunately taking my first L to the beat the book. I trusted the Cardinals a little too well, and uh, they folded on me like uh, I, I'm an idiot, and that's okay. Um, guy, tough uh, tough trio treat going 0-2 and 1, but he bounced back well going 3-2 and two on uh, Sunday. I, I mean, o two and one. I'll I'll get to that later. I'll, I'll address that later. It's it's gonna be part of the show. But uh, bounce back three and two, no problem. Easy money. Uh, what was Jason Public's record? Um, good good question. The year to date record for both of us. I stand at uh, ten eight and two, and uh, yourself guys at uh, seven eleven and two. Uh, special guest Jason Public did not have the best showing. Um, going two and three, losing his beat the book. Also having the first ever money line plays on the show and both losing, it's a tough look. It's a tough look. And uh, two weeks ago, if you you guys remember, uh, Mr. Prop going two and three and zero oh and three on props. Um, our special guests have not been well, but that's why we brought out the specialist special guest, our favorite special guest, quite possibly the special guest that we've had on this show, Austin. Gator Green Gar, a.k.a. The Mute. Tell you what, boys, it's an absolute honor and pleasure to be here. Um, I hope I can uh, hope I can do well for uh, these special guests here. We're, we're not putting up a good uh, display here, so I, uh, I, I came with some picks. Uh, don't love them. I absolutely love them. <laughs> they, are, they are ugly, and that's why we love them. We're not going to go into why my name is The Mute, um, speaking of what happened last Saturday. This is a Sunday game podcast. This is a Sunday game show, and I know Mr. I know Mr. Guy wouldn't want, wouldn't want any of that talk around here. Well, I've given up on the Saturday game, but it's, it's all about the road show now, and it's time to address some of the Sunday game. The Mute, you got to get on the board here. Easy to take over is the top dog special guest. We had two, yep. two sharp guys on here. Uh, I know we called him Jason Public, but he had some sharp picks. Mr. Prop, typically a pretty good gambler, but uh, got to get in the one spot here on the graphic. The mute. Uh, I wish there was some pressure on you, but really, there's no pressure with having those two bums on the show. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Absolutely zero pressure. If I win as much as I lose, I'm I'm the best gambler on this show so far. That math adds up. All let's right. get some picks going. Big Let, brain. Let's let's get into the games. Here's the records to date yet again. Like I said, Big Brain Benny, 10, 8, and 2. I'm winning you money if you ride with me every week. Guy, 7, 11, and 2. He's bouncing back 3 and 2 on Sunday slate. He's looking to get bouncing back over back, 500. Bouncing back. Special guest record, like we talked about, Mr. Prop 2 and 3, 0 and 3 on props. Jason Public 2 and 3. And I had to mention the 0 and 2 on money line plays because that was just wild. Um, the mute. You can jump right onto the number one spot quite easily, but like we're we're here to talk about games. We got our first game of the week, and it wouldn't be right if we weren't talking about our Pittsburgh Steelers coming off a huge Matt Canada less win, playing the Arizona Cardinals at home. Arizona's plus five and a half. The over under is at forty one and a half. Guy, like always, start us off. Past three weeks on this show, we've started off at the Steeler game. We've read the line. We've read the over-under number. I, I've been preaching the last three weeks. The number with the Steelers is just always terrible. You guys know me. I'm not an over-under better typically. Uh, Cardinals at Steelers. Cardinals showing a little bit of a fight, maybe, because we keep – I mean, not to bring it up, but no. Big Brain, who was your last two beat the book picks? Cardinals, but they pushed two weeks ago. They pushed. They pushed two weeks ago. Uh, got absolutely destroyed last they week did. against the LA Rams. Kyler Murray's playing for his job. Canadaless, Canadaless Steelers. Give me the over 41 and a half. I like some points. Steelers Damn. at home. First time without Matt Canada. 
Fans are going to be fired up. They might even introduce the new coordinator over the loudspeaker. I think he's going to get a big, uh, big applause. I mean, the Steelers scored 16 points last week, but it just looked a lot better. I think the Steelers' defense has some holes. Kyler Murray, running quarterback. Steelers always do well against Lamar Jackson, but Kyler Murray, he's fun to watch. Uh, I like the Cardinals score some points. I like the Steelers score some points. I like this game about 27-24. Give me the over 41 and a half. Wow. That's not what I saw coming. I think that – Steelers are very well against running quarterbacks. I don't know what it is. We're, the Steelers are terrible against terrible quarterbacks. Now, last week they only let up, what, 13 points, whatever it was. But who who are we best against? Lamar? Lamar can't beat the Steelers. And I just can't think of other running quarterbacks that beat the Steelers. Mm -hmm. um, is it my turn for this pick? It is. All right. So I am calling this game the the where were you game. Where were you? when Kenny Pickett threw three touchdowns and 300 yards. Where were you for <laughs> that game? Over. Where were you for that game? Five and a half is such an ugly line for the Steelers, mm -hmm. but they win by six. I'm taking the Steelers minus five and a half. I think, like all Steelers games, they're going to start slow. They'll pick it up in the third quarter. Arizona will be down about nine. They'll kick a field goal to take it to six. And then the Steelers will go three and out. And then the defense, as always, will get a stop. Probably on their side of the field, will probably get some sort of late pick. So I'm taking Steelers minus five and a half. Specifically think they're going to win by six. That's an interesting logic, and I, I can't deny the uh, – I can't deny it. So, um, you know, I look at this game – um arizona with kyler being fully back you know like he's back now three weeks going on fourth week he he's back he looks he's running around he's scrambling they've struggled to put up points they they put up 16 against the texans and i believe 14 and got pally walked by the goddamn rams pittsburgh has struggled to put up points all fucking year three years. there is no there is no business for this over under to be 40 plus points under 41 and a half. And you know what? Give me the Steelers minus five and a half. This is going to be a 20 to 10 game. This is going to be just over done with Arizona is going to look. Sorry. I'm double down and on this under 41 and for the, excuse me, under 41 and a half and Steelers minus five and a half riding with the mute. If I may sneaky play, it's, it's a prop, but not really Cardinals under 16 and a half at plus plus one ten. Steelers, I, I, aver Steelers I, defense I, averaging 16 and a half. Do you want that on your on your card? I do not. I just want the people to know. I if like you it. like to sprinkle a little, Cardinals under 16 and a half at plus 110, plus money. Hmm. 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 That's interesting. That's an interesting line. All right, let's get into our next game. Guy, you're going to kick us off here. I don't got much for this game. We got the Colts traveling to Tennessee. Tennessee plus one over under 42 and a half. I love matchups like this. The best part about a matchup like this, I feel like I'm the only guy watching it. Because unless you're a Titans fan or unless you're a Colts fan, there is not a chance in hell you're tuning into this game. But you will tune in this game if you take the Titans plus one here. Uh, Titans at home. Colts. Colts are terrible. I don't care how much you want to trick yourself and then the Colts keep winning these weird games with Gardner Minshew. Minshew Mania has been over for two years. The Titans at home, Derrick Henry, it's getting into December. He's going to start running the football. Uh, I just I just like the Titans plus one in this matchup. Don't know why, just do. I like him at home. Hate they're watching their stadium on television. Bad TV stadium. But uh, I think the Colts are just going to – they're just going to get killed in this game. Give me the Titans plus one. I think the Titans might win this game by by six. Um, but also, they could also just win this game by by one, and, it, and it'd be fine. They could lose the game by half a point. All right, Mute, what do you got for this stink fest? This stink fest, I'm calling this one the Phil Collins Dirty Burger because this game is fucking greasy. <laughs> 
I have a little note here. If you are if you are betting on this game to just to have a bet on this game, you need to call the number on the bottom of the app. I agree. I, I think that just to have money on this game, because this line is awful. I don't want to watch this game. You need to call the number on the bottom of the app, the 1-800 number, and say, all right, may, maybe I do have a problem. So all, all the things that Guy said earlier. Is Jonathan Taylor playing? I think he's out. Nope, out for three weeks. Jonathan Taylor's out. Anthony Richardson, out. Been out for a while. Minshew on the road. It is December. It's Tractor Cedo season. Mm. This game screams Titans, which is why you have to take the Colts minus one. I, I think that yeah, everything man in the suit. Everything is lining up. It's Tractor Cedo season. Jonathan Taylor's out. Gardner Minshew stinks on the road. I, I just think this game. Every they're t- they're begging you to take the Titans. I think the Colts are sneaky good. I'm taking the Colts minus one in an Before ugly, you- ugly, ugly game. Before you get going here, Big Brain, this is also one of these games where the Steelers hit the over, they win by six, and then time expires, and it just throws you to Tennessee with four minutes to go. And that's why you want to have action on this game, because this game is going to be just an absolute stink fest that's going to still be going on after all the uh, one o'clock games are over. You're going to tune into this one before you head head over to Philadelphia. Um. Okay. Um. I hate we're even discussing this game. Just give me the Titans plus one. Vrabel, home dog. I don't care. Colts suck. Titans plus one. We're moving on. <laughs> on to the next. Top two games of the week, in my opinion. We have the Denver Broncos riding hot off their five-game winning streak, laying three and a half traveling to Texas and taking on the Houston Texans who just lost a heartbreaker against the Mutes jagging off Jags. The over-under for this line is 47 and a half. Mute, we'll let you kick us off here. All right, this game is called the Do You Know Ball game. Mm. Because if you would have told me in August that this game was going to be good, I would have called you an absolute moron. Yep, I would have said the Texans – and the Broncos is going to be the second best game of the day, I would have said you're an absolute moron. So apparently I'm an absolute moron. So my Jags. Hey, bro, real quick, do you do you agree with me that this is top two game of the week this week? Oh, for ab- sure? oh 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great but like, game. I, I'm in agreement with you. At the beginning of the season, you look at this game and you're just like, who cares? Yep. Yeah, I would have just said, okay, yeah, this game happened. Um. Yep. What the Jags did to the Texans last week was the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. The Texans were fun. They had they had the rookie quarterback, who is very good, C.J. Stroud, Stroud boys. C.J. Stroud is very good. But that the moment that doink happened, all of Houston just shattered. Their season is done. Everything is downhill from here. So give me a hot Russell Wilson, who is playing phenomenal right now. Are the Broncos fun? Are they a fun team? No. Uh, meh. They they might be kind of fun, but nope. I think Houston wins close games, and I don't think they're going to win this game, but I'm not going to take the money line. Just give me Den- Denver plus three and a half. I think it's a field goal game. I think it's a great game. Um, I'm not going to take the over, but I think there's going to be points scored here. But, yeah, give, give me Denver plus three and a half. I think the, I think the Texans, everything is done from here. They had their they had their they were riding high. They had it. I think it's over now. Give me the Broncos. Mm. Uh, let me take it away here. So, like I said, top two games of the week. We're looking at this Denver five game winning streak. Um, but let's look at who they played and how they started this five game winning streak. They played a Packers team that didn't know what the hell they were doing on offense. They played a lost Chiefs offense. They played a Ken Dorsey led Bills. Barely beat the Pastronaut and the Vikings at home. And we saw what the Pastronaut did on Monday night and handled business against DTR and PJ Walker. Not that impressive. Houston, on the other hand, they've been impressive. And I called it out last week when Vegas had the line Denver minus two and a half at, uh, at home against the Browns. I said, that's the right line. I look at this line. 
Houston Texans minus three and a half. This is where the Broncos come back down to earth. They're playing a real team, a real offense. Houston Texans minus three and a half. This game is going to get kind of ugly. Not super ugly, kind of ugly. Houston Texans minus three and a half. Guy, what do you got? Houston Texans minus three and a half. Mm. Very easy pick. The Texans lost a heartbreaker to the Jags off a 58-yard field goal by Matt Amendola that hit the pipe. Guy sitting on his couch comes out, almost drills a 58-yarder. This crowd, I don't know if you guys watched that game last week, but that crowd. It was loud. Juice. That crowd rocked. Juice. That crowd was awesome. Juice. C.J. Stroud, Offensive Rookie of the Year. D'Amico Ryans, Coach of the Year. Their defense is solid. Tank Dell is unbelievable. Broncos come back down to earth here, and they fall hard to the yeah. Houston Texans. Texans sitting at six and five, get right back in the win column. That AFC South is going to get thirty. It's this gonna is get 30. for this is this is potentially for a playoff spot. Yes, when it boils I, I mean, down to it, this is a huge game. Denver's been playing okay, but Denver stinks. Don't trick yourself into thinking Denver's any good. Uh, I love that the mute took Denver plus three and a half. We told him, Big Brain, before this show started on the intro, we told him, we said, hey, that leaderboard, it's up for grabs. Mr. Mm -hmm. Prop, under 500. Jason Public, under 500. This would be the game to possibly put you over 500. And you go Denver plus three and a half. Houston, minus three and a half all day long. I, Houston's one of those teams you turn on Mike Greenberg in the morning. He He's going on and on about his Jets, but he always somehow mentions, you know, if Houston gets in, and I'm with them, if Houston gets into the tournament, they could make some noise. Give me I, Houston. I'm not noise. disagreeing. I can't H believe Houston? you just dropped a Mike Greenberg on us. Mike Houston Greenberg. was a great game. Houston's a great team. Great game last week. Up. But that post – that that did it. They're done. That that hitting that post because if they win that game, they're leading the AFC South because they beat. I think they beat the Jags twice. They're probably one, two, or three seed. But I I think all of their life just got sucked out. They may win this game, but it's it's not going to be a blowout. They're going to win by a field goal if anything. Mm. Well, we'll have to let the. The men play football like we always do. That's why they play the game. We'll boil it down. We got Guy and I on Houston matching up against our special guest, Denver, plus three and a half. Let's kick it off our last game of the week. I'll start us off here. America's game of the week. Rematch of last year's NFC Championship. A revenge game for the 49ers. And kind of the Eagles, too, for some reason. We got the 49ers heading to Lincoln Financial Field playing the Eagles, and the Eagles are laying plus two and a half, and the over is at 47. This line opened up at plus one Eagles and then jumped to plus three, and then now it's at plus two and a half. This is fishy. This smells like Niners minus two and a half. But I was an idiot last week and took the under in America's Game of the Week, Bills, Eagles. I'm taking the over here and just hoping this is a fun, fun game because I think it's going to be electric. And 47, it's not that low of a number. If we have like a 28, 24, 27, 21 type of deal, that's what I'm looking at. It's going to it's gonna be close. It's going to get greasy. But I like this over. I want to have fun this game because this line is fishy. Boosa. Boosa. Guess who's not playing today, Bosa? Well, Philadelphia got that one right last year when Joey Bosa snapped. Heading into Lincoln Financial Field, going to watch his brother lose to the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC title game. But let me tell you something, Philadelphia. Nick Bosa is playing in this game. This is San Francisco revenge game. Minus two and a half at Lincoln Financial. Eagles are going to lose this game. And I can already hear the excuses from the Eagles fan. Well, it doesn't matter. We're still we're still number one in the NFC, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, play a real team, pal. You play the dead dog Bills last week, barely beat them. Give me San Francisco minus two and a half. They've been waiting for this game. 
in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they wanted to play this game at home. If they had the choice, they'd want to play it in Philadelphia. Uh, give me San Francisco minus two and a half. And I think it's going to be a quiet Lincoln Financial Field come the third quarter. Mm. And I will tell you one other thing, Big Brain. I'm going to make this a double play. Double Ooh. play. Give me the under 47. Oh. oh. Wow. We got an over and an under. I don't think so. I don't think the Eagles score points. I don't think the Eagles are going to score points this game. They're, they're getting the goose. Push one or two in. Oh, they're going to push one or two in, but I don't think it gets the 47. I don't see Brock. I mean, I know you took the over. I don't see Brock Purdy going and lighting this game up. I think this is a San Francisco defense special. Now, if this was at 820, I would agree with you. But the fact that it's America's game of the week, it's always juiced up for some reason. I mean, it's basically 820 at 4 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, The it's it's halftime of the 1 o'clock games. And I'm like, well, better <laughs> better start getting ready for bed here. All right, Mute, what um, do you got for this game? Calling this one the seatbelt game because you better buckle up. Mm. Anyone know the uh, the weather in Philadelphia on a uh, Sunday afternoon? I actually it's don't. Gonna be, it's going to be shitty outside. Is it? It's going to be <laughs> oh, shitty yeah. outside. What do these two teams do well? Run, run, the ball. run, run. San Fran's defense, very good. Eagles defense, secondary has some holes, but that D-line is monstrous. Mm -hmm. I love the Eagles. I love Jalen Hurts. I'm not touching this line. I'm with Guy on this. Give me the under oh, under. Good pick. Good pick, Mute. Can I ask you guys something? What was the weather last week in Philly against the Bills? Terrible. It was pretty, it was pretty shitty out, right? Oh, it was yeah. But, okay. I, yeah, I, so I, I was we'll just making sure. I was just making sure. Yeah, right. yeah, over, so, over time, let, over time, hit the over. Let, let's get – yeah. Let's get to beat the book, play of the day. It's time to fucking beat the shit out of the book. As always, we'll have our special guest kick us off. I mean, anyone that's half a friend of mine knows where I'm going with this, and I absolutely <laughs> hate it. I want both of you, one at a time, to name three teams that are dead. I'm not saying teams that are just bad and they've been bad all year. Name three teams that you're like, in the beginning of the year, they're like, oh, these teams are good. Now they're dead. And I'll stop you when you say that team. Go ahead, big brain. Bengals. Oh, there it is. The Bengals are <laughs> fucking dead. <laughs> we I should have played team. along a little more. <laughs> we watched that team against the Steelers last week. They <laughs> stuck. <laughs> they fucking stuck. stuck. I hope you're watching, Brady. <laughs> Do you know who wins big games on Monday nights? Go back Saturday game plug. Or sorry, on Monday nights? Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence wins national championships on Mondays, and he covers nine-point spreads on Monday nights. I'm jagging off. Give me the Jags minus nine. That is an absolutely disgusting, awful line. I picked this team in August, mainly because I saw one clip of Calvin Ridley running a route, and I was like, oh, yeah, the Jags are absolutely going to win the Super Bowl. Been sticking with the Jags all year long. I'm jagging off. Give me Jags minus nine Monday night against the dead, dead, dead Bengals. Guy, let me let me let me break something down for you. We've had three special guests on the show and three ever first time plays. We have the first ever props, first ever money line, and the first ever Monday night football play. This is electric. <laughs> this is why you tune into the show, folks. Uh, big Can brain, I throw an alternative in there? Sure. This isn't a double beat the book, but this is a I'm putting the Jags minus nine at about five units. And let me sprinkle a little two units. This is not a beat the book. This is just a little sprinkle. Asterix. Over three and a half field goals in this game at minus 105 is the easiest thing of all time. Mm. The Jags kind of stink in the red zone and yeah. the Bengals are just not going to score. You might you you'll probably you'll get one from the Bengals. Yeah, oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you'll get. I'm thinking at least two from each team. The Jags stink in the red zone, and the Bengals can't score touchdowns because Browning. 
Dare I say years a P old. word? No. No, I, we don't P word on this show. We we respect <laughs> gambling. We don't we don't come here to lose money for P words. But I think over three and a half field goals at minus one oh five, I think that's stealing money. It's a prime time game. I think that hits maybe early in the third quarter. Hmm. Big brain, I'm gonna let you go on your beat the book. Rightfully so. I lost, so I shouldn't go last. One one and one on the year. Um not not what I want to be. I want to be three and oh. I'm looking to return to it. And I look at this game, and this game has two teams on opposite sides of the spectrum. We have one team, if if stays healthy, maybe playoffs. Who knows? Maybe they can make a run at it. Other team, now they've been there before. They're used to it, franchise and fan base, darkness and despair. And I'm, I'm of course, talking about the Cleveland Browns going to the L.A. Rams. I look at this game and I just saw the news. Joe Flacco has been practicing with the, uh, with the number one offense. Holy shit. Is this game gonna <laughs> stay? This is a game where you are not going to watch you, this. It, it doesn't matter how many TVs you have in your, in your own sports book. This game should not be on TV. Give me the under 40, not watching under 40. There's no reason why this game is at 40 points. I don't care. The the Rams, Matt Stafford probably will get hurt. The Browns defense is still good. But Joe Flacco, are you kidding me? Under 40, easily. I Easily. I like that pick. I like that pick. I, I was thinking watch Rams that minus three. Flacco. I like minus three and a half from the Rams. I think they're going to get, I think they're not hot, but I think they just win this game. I think the Browns are done. Joe Flacco, how old is he? He has to be in his 40s, right? He got to be pushing 40 at least. Yeah. So I, I think I think the under is a good call. I also like the Rams as well. Mm. We hate I the Rams. Right, what do you got? Sure. All right. Uh, just big brain, you and I have been together since we started this show. Uh, just reminding the crowd here. Started out 4-0 and on this show famously. Also hit the beat the book with the Texans plus six. After that, hit a little bit of a spiral. I said I was going to address this. I addressed it last week, went 0-6 two weeks ago. Mm. Playoff, uh, I'm sorry, Thanksgiving trio treat, 0-2-1. Sneaky, sneaky push at the end of that slate. Um, <laughs> had a good Sunday, 3-2. and two, Destroyed my beat the book. Famously the only guy that won the beat the book. My record, a little bit ugly, 7-11-2. But 7-11 is always open. And I'll tell you what, if I can't get above 50%, I'll be damn sure I'll be way above 50% in the beat the book. So for my beat the book pick this week, I know there's a certain viewer out there that we know well here at the road show. Certain viewer out there, me and him chatted up off to the side, and we love this head coach. We love him. I mean, famously, we've said on the show, Mike Tomlin, terrible, terrible ball coach. I wish this coach coached the Steelers. Um, you watched the Jets last week. Awesome, awesome first half cover by the Miami Dolphins. All the signs are pointing to taking the Jets. I are they? fucking love Arthur Smith and the Atlanta Falcons minus two and a half against the total bum New York Jets. I don't care if Aaron Rodgers comes out of the tunnel on Sunday. The Atlanta Falcons are going to beat the shit out of the Jets. Haven't said the F-bomb on this show all year, but I just fucking said it. Give me the Falcons, minus two and a half. Beat the book. Get me to three and one on the year. Also going to boost my record. We're going to go four and oh, plus to beat the book, five and oh. Hey, Ben, what's seven plus five? Twelve. 12 and 11 coming into next week. There's no other choice. 12 and 11 going to next week above 50%, and it all rides on the Atlanta Falcons, minus two and a half. Give me the Falcons. It's my favorite beat-the-book pick I've ever made on the road show. Is this game of the year? It's close. It's close. I, I've yet to declare a game of the year, but this is Game close. of the month. 
game of the month. Game it's of the a, month. it's definitely the game of the week. Guy, are you are you on drugs? No. Just making sure. All right. The the road show parlay, one and two on the year, looking to bounce back. We're plus money still. Twenty-five dollars at plus five seventy-three puts you at a one sixty-eight payout. We got the Atlanta Falcons guy riding that. Mute riding the Jags minus nine, and myself Falcons. riding the. What did I say? Did I not say the Falcons? I thought I said the Falcons. Falcons yeah, minus two and a half for guy. Uh, the mute Jags minus nine, and myself the under forty in Browns Rams. And, and that um, Monday night slate. Monday night don't... slate to push if, if it. We do to push words, it home. If you if you guys go two for two, you can hedge. Well, hey, I always put in the beat the book parlay. I know. If you guys go you two for two, the you, could, the you gotta put in the beat. You can the book hedge, parlay. go Bengals plus nine, guaranteed money. Could hedge, but never hedge. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Let's win some money. Let's break the book. Let's beat the fuck out of the book. Let's have a good one. Take it easy. Stay daggish. <laughs>